Jake Paul Polaroids? He uh, he's big into Polaroids now. Apparently, I don't know. That's I'm. Uh, I dated this girl who uh, dated a strong word. I slept with this girl who uh, <laughs> who went to college with him and said he's a giant. He was a giant douchebag. It's like it, it very tracks how they are. Yeah, I mean, was it Jake or Logan? Jake's the. I mean, they both are, but Jake's fucking the older one. Or wait, I no, think Logan's, Logan's the older, the older one. one. I take it back. Logan. I, Logan. I, I like Logan more than Jake. I, oh yeah, he's grown up. He's fucking matured. Eventually, you gotta get older. Yeah, no. Eventually. He, eventually. I, don't he, tell me. You ever met somebody who just <laughs> refuses to grow up? Yeah. You're looking at one, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I was out till fucking three thirty in the morning last night. You're looking at what it. What were you doing at three thirty in the morning? Oh, uh, we were drinking. We were boozing. Okay. All mm-hmm. right. Okay. You and you and your crew? Uh, just a bunch of comedians. There's two uh, Irish comedians in town. Is this all recording? This is all recording. Yeah, this is all recording. Oh, fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's two Irish comedians in town from. Uh, uh, they used to live here, mm. and they had to move back because you know green cards expire eventually. Oh shit. So yeah, they had, huh. they had to move back, and then uh, it's Mike Rice and John Spillane. They're fucking hilarious, and they're in town from. So uh, we were hanging out with them. The Irish are funny, very. very so Mike. Mike's one of the funniest comedians. Mike lives in London now. He might be one of. The, last night, the show he was on, it was the most dead. Ever, it was like an audience like that didn't want to laugh, and he fucking murdered. Yeah. He went in there and just fucking crushed. I was like, God damn it! I was was, like, is he what one the of the fuck? Is he like a loud guy? How would you describe him? Um, they both. It, they're both very different. So Spillane's like a Spillane's like a chaotic guy. Mike's more of like a he knows where to hit kind of guy. So like. He was like fucking talking about politics and murdering last night. I was like, fuck. I was like, hey. That's, that's so it was, good. It's great to see, dude. What yeah. You, I didn't really hang out much with them when they were here. Because, like, they were only here for, like, I think, like a year or some change. Maybe a year and some change when I first got here. But I would just see them at open mics and they were great dudes and fucking. That's awesome. Yeah. It's cool seeing, it's cool seeing them do well. Yeah. I went yeah. to, when I went to Ireland, they were funny as fuck. Oh, they're hilarious. Yeah. They're, they're, they, they're. I think the they're Irish. Dr- are they're favorite. drunks. Yeah, yeah. They're and drunks are funny people. Very. You don't s- want to acknowledge it, but drunks are funny people. Very serious alcoholism over there. Yeah. Oh, it's a problem. Yeah, a lot of people have the shakes yeah. and shit. Oh, it'll kick in eventually for me at some point. Are you? Yeah. Are you an alcoholic? No, but I fucking when I drink, you drink too much and uh, you get a hangover. And that's a part of it. All right, that's fair. And I'll be fine. I took a bunch of vitamins. Okay. Wake up, took my fucking hangover cocktail. I'm so glad that I've gotten to know you uh, better, and I re-listened to our episode. Yeah. So uh, I, I will be digging into some stuff. Later. Oh yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you got you got a little fucking. I'm gonna psychoanalyze little, little shovel. Uh huh. Oh, oh brother, I'll just tell you that <laughs> we're gonna get there. We're gonna get deep oh, yeah. inside of you, but and I mean that in the sexual way. But <laughs> oh, there it is. Before we do that, you have a special. I do. You're yeah. gonna be September seventeenth. September and that's at, at Lincoln the Lincoln Lodge. Lodge. Seven thirty, nine thirty. Tickets on sale at the links in my bio. I've said that so many times. I fucking think I'm saying it in my sleep. I will be clipping It's this, exhausting. So it'll be out there. Oh, again. cool. Uh, Good. Let the people know. Let all of the people, all 40 people that listen to this. Hey, we got 80-something on mine. And you want to know why? Because of me. <laughs> Speaking of which, we talked about that. We talked about listeners. They've gone up since. Good. Yeah, yeah. fuck yeah. You got to expand the audience. Get more comics on. The thing is consistency. So, like, you're not going to get, like... It's going to be a while before you get a lot of views and listens. But that's a part of it. That's a part of growth. It fucking takes time. Yeah, man. Okay, so <clears throat> this is your first special. Yep. What led you to this? Why? Why now? Um, because someone offered to film it for me, and I said, okay. I was like, okay. Well, actually, really what it is is like at the beginning of the year, I was like, okay, any comedy opportunities that come up, I'm fucking taking them. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm just going to take them. So these, it was actually funny. I posted that. Uh, this dude followed me, um, Chase Crawford, great guy. Um, this, his company's filming it. Um, he followed me on Instagram a while ago and, uh, and then he hit me up and he was like, uh, it was actually after I did the three, uh, I did, I did comedy bar, Zany's laugh factory all in one night. And I posted an Instagram, uh, post about that. And he goes, Oh yeah. He's like, I saw that post, man. It's good to see you're working so hard. He's like, we're actually filming a bunch of specials this year. He like messaged me. He's like, uh, I'd love to talk to you about it. So like I gave him my number, he called me and then we, we had a long conversation on the phone and I was like, all right, I'll get back to you on like. If I think it's right, and I thought about it for like a day, I asked a couple of people, but in my mind, I already was like, all right, if I give myself six months, I think I'll, that'll be plenty of time. And I gave myself six months, and uh, two weeks out, I'm, I'm throwing up every morning now. 
Not really, but fucking, I feel like I'm going to. It's so stressful. <clears throat> stressful of the idea that, like, what if it just doesn't come out? Oh, yeah, dude. Fucking that. And then also, like, selling tickets is a fucking nightmare. Like, trying to move tickets is insane. Like, it's been a month. Dude, every morning, <laughs> fuck Eventbrite for this. Every morning I get an email from Eventbrite. And they're like, hey, yesterday you sold zero tickets. I'm like, go fuck yourself, <laughs> Eventbrite, you dicks. How many have you sold so far? I've sold 26 for the first show, 35 for the second. Which is plenty. Yeah. But the thing is, everybody keeps being like, you know what? Two weeks out, that's when they'll start moving. And then it, as it's gotten closer, it's changed. The week of, they'll start moving. I'm like, is it going to be the day of in yeah. a fucking week? It's going to be a few hours afterwards. Yeah. They'll be like, oh, yeah, we should have bought We should have. Ah. How many? You're in the blue room, yeah? The big room? No, I'm in the orange room right now. And if that sells out, they're moving me up to the big room. Okay. So I'm about to sell out the orange room. And then I need to sell 45 more tickets for each show. Dude, you just have anxiety. Oh, I'm crippling anxiety. Yeah. I know, but that's you're gonna be fine. Everybody keeps telling me that. I'm so. I just like, don't want to be a failure. I just don't want to be a fucking failure. I am so confident you're gonna be. The second I step on stage, all that will go away. Yeah, yeah. You seem aware of that. Yeah. And so for the director, um, is he approaching this, for lack of a better word, as a generic film thing he's doing, or is he trying to add his, his own artistic slant? No, nah, it's it'll just be a basic i don't even know if they have two or one cameras but it, it'll just be basic. they filmed fucking they're filming 30 specials this year right they're doing vic pandia's like two days before mine really the, uh, house of blues yeah Look at well vic met uh vic met one of the um one of the guys that works for them came he's also a comedian and he works for them and he uh when silverman was jake so you know jake silverman the mm -hmm. dude from portland mm -hmm. he's actually gonna be here today uh, i'm supposed to text him fuck but uh he uh he was in town, and he's like, uh, he wanted to do an hour of crowd work at the, the Lincoln Lodge, and he fucking murders crowd work. It's insane. It, like when I watch, it, I'm like, damn, I need to get better at that. Yeah. But um, he uh, he um was in town, and then that dude who works for Four by Three was in town, and he opened. He had me host, and then he had that dude open, and Vic was on the show. I think Vic and him got to talking, and then like he probably connected him. So then Vic got got one. He's like, yeah, I'm doing it on a Thursday. I'm like. I'm doing it on a Saturday, cause my 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 thought process was you know people will come out on a Saturday, and someone was like oh you should do it during the week people have plans on the weekends I'm like the point is to be the plans right. you want to be the plans you I I can't imagine you and Vic have a crossover in no in, audience no nah. probably not no uh, his his audience went to college and you know. <laughs> as regular jobs my so. audience is truck drivers and construction uh, workers yeah, yeah, yeah. and but degenerate look, family absolutely <laughs> yeah um. What in comedy? This is interesting. What in comedy do you think you need to prove on? Is there like so like crowd work, for instance? Is there a skill that you feel like you need to work on? Yeah, there's, uh, you you should be getting better every day. Like fucking, there's plenty of stuff I need to work on. Like I'm not great at crowd work. I don't really do one liners. There's things you can work on. I mean, there's a balance of knowing who you are and mm -hmm. then knowing like what you want to do, and like you can be like, all right, I'm just gonna be the storytelling guy, or you could be like, all right, let's see if I could be all the all the things. Fucking. Mamba mentality, every day. Strive to be the be best version of yourself. I'm, it, Kobe is still unreal to me. Why? What do you mean? In like sometimes I'll, I'll see a clip, I'll see a Black Mamba clip, and I'll be like, man, man, Kobe's the great. And then and you forget that he died. Yeah. Yeah. It's, no. It's it's hard. It's for also me. because he he was so young. Yeah. And like when someone dies young, it's like that doesn't make sense. No. I can pro I could process Robin Williams. Yeah, no, that, but he's all, he was in his sixties. Kobe was forty, forty two, and and like healthy. Like, oh yeah, he was in great shape. Yeah, no, okay. Kobe, dude, I cried, I cried like I fucking knew him when he died. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'm having deja vu, and I know we didn't talk about this last episode because I literally just listened to it. Who do you think is next? If you were to predict the next, I don't want to do that. I don't. No? I'm not putting that you out there. Put the bad juju Fuck out there? that. No, thank you. Yeah. See, there's where. The, hey, Cosby, how's that? <laughs> Fuck that guy. Hey, hopefully he drops. Did you watch the uh, the doc? No, I, I don't want to hear about the nightmare that of a human being that he was. You know, no, if he's, you know, yeah, with the pudding and the popsicles <laughs> and the. Oh, bad. I dropped that in your drink. Sorry. There's a whole bit that he has on one of his specials about Spanish fly and drugging women. What the fuck? Yeah, he has a whole good like ten minutes on. That's it. insane to think where he's like, he's like, I'm a drug. He's, he's drugging women. And he yeah. goes, this would be a good bit. Yeah, and that's everyone fucking loved it. That is ludicrous. I think it's a good example of how comedy. I don't think comedy ever should age well. Okay, actually, that's not a good example of what I mean by that. But like, 
<laughs> I hear what you're saying. You, no, it, it it's of the time. Yeah. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. Go ahead, get, get some water. I'm, I'm listening. No, I'll talk. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, shit, I'll sit in my apartment and talk to myself. <laughs> I don't care. You won't do that, though. Right? I won't. Hold on. You won't do that because you can't be alone, Brian Rowe. No, dude, I was really thinking about that as I was driving over here. I was like, I, I got to be on the move. I got to move. I, okay. Oh, we'll I live get- by myself now, though, so. I, I'm enjoying it. Have you been? This is your first time living by yourself. Yeah. How? All on my own. How? Is all that? by <laughs> myself. Ooh, we harmonized there. That's, That's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> synergy. Okay, before I get into your you, how's the last year been? Because we we recorded. It's been interesting. Okay. This it was a weird. It was a fucking weird year. Really? Yeah. I went through my first like genuine heartbreak, so that was interesting. And then, uh, yeah, like it was not the thing I'm thinking of. You might be. I don't know. <laughs> no names, but fucking yeah, no, yeah, names, no, no names, names, but yeah, names. no. Um, yeah, no. So that was weird. Not the thing I'm thinking. No, no, okay. no, no, no. Not, not the thing you're thinking of. No, that's hilarious. That is hilarious that you wrote that name down. <laughs> that is funny. So I'm gonna listen to this and be like, is that me? Might be. Maybe. It might Eventually. be. Yeah, no. It was like the first person. Like I, I genuinely was like, oh, I care a mu- so much about this person. Mm-hmm. Which there's some women. If they hear this, they're gonna be upset. <laughs> <laughs> but uh no it was like the first person I was like oh yeah I want like I want to be in this person's life and everything and it just didn't pan out and that was your first real like adult love yeah yeah yeah, mm. yeah no it, it it was just uh, I had to come to terms with the fact I never meant anything to them so the mind's a powerful thing it cre- is, is that how you feel yeah I mean that's how I feel fucking based on the conversations we've had wow yeah no it uh it's what it is fucking that's life that's it actually was really good for me. Like it, it really it taught me. I I had to learn to love. I, you learn to love yourself after you go through heartbreak. That's. So I, I spent like the year fucking piecing myself together, and like you go, oh wait, I'm not gonna like, I don't want to die because this person's not in my life. It's just they're not in my life, and fucking that's okay. And you find your you find a way to to quote the great Bernie Mac: If people don't like you for being yourself, fuck them. I like that. Yeah, no, I, you know you just gotta be you and. You know, some some people come around to it and some people don't and learn to love yourself and appreciate the time you have. Were you were you going through this when we had met? When we, we met We what? met a year ago. Like literally a, a year like ago. Like a year ago? No, it was like a couple months. Okay. It was uh so it was like probably right after we fucking did the last one. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The whole learning and loving yourself. I'm getting there too, man. It takes time. Yeah. I'm just Live I'm, and grow, baby. Live and grow. I feel so much more grounded since we first did this. Yeah, well, you you were living with your ex, buddy. Well, not only that, but it was a new it was a new place. The whole trauma of the pat, like yeah, it was a whirlwind of experiences. Yeah, I even when I listen back to the episode, I can hear myself in a completely different mindset. It is it is exceptional to see how how you differ from year to year. It's so nice. I'm I'm so much happier right now. That's good. Um, yeah, but. You you okay? So you're able to to love. Yeah, that's a good step. I'm not a soci- <laughs> I'm not a psychopath. I'm not a psychopath. I don't think I so. I love plenty of shit. I mean, dude, the funniest thing is, uh, like, so I I tell like people I love them all the time. Like fucking, yeah. if I uh like my friends especially, but like I said I love you to like one of my friends, and this dude goes, man, that's gay. I'm like, what? And he goes, you can't say you love you to someone you're not having sex with. I'm like, you never said I love you to your mom? Bro, I said I love you to a bowl of mac and cheese. What the fuck do you mean having sex with? I was like, I, had, I said I love you to a bowl of mac and cheese the other day. Yeah. That dude needs to listen to Kendrick's yeah. new album. Yeah. He needs to grow. Yeah. He really needs to get some therapy. That that idea, though, of, of fuck them. They don't like you. Fuck them. I have mixed feelings. Yeah, I get what you're saying. No, it's like... Uh, in the context of the way Bernie Mac does it, it's a joke in House Party 2. Fantastic scene. Um, I could literally quote the whole scene. It's Masterful. so fantastic. Oh, he's great. Um, but, but... You gotta... It's not like fuck him in the sense where like, ah, you hate him. But it's like fuck him in the sense where it's like, all right, they're, they're, they just don't... It doesn't matter. If they don't like you, it doesn't matter is what you gotta come to terms with. Yeah, it's okay. Not everyone's gonna like you. No, you have to... No, that's, to think everyone's gonna like... The people that like you aren't going to like you every day. Yes. So, yes. like, you have to just come to terms with that. I think the the what I get concerned about that I concept is how extreme everyone is in general right now. Yeah. And how extreme that concept. I think Trump's probably the best example. Yeah. Of, of fuck. He, didn't he bury his ex-wife on his golf course for, like, tax reasons? Did they? That's wild. Yeah. That's, like, the most 
that's the highest level of fuck them I can ever imagine. That is some evil shit. Yeah. What are you going to do? But but yeah, I guess it's a balance. The thing. almighty dollar. It's a balance thing, and I'm uh, I'm 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 getting there. I uh, I've been making I've been making a solid group of healthy black friends. That's good. Thank you. I don't need you anymore, now, Brian. <laughs> I'm out of my life. See all these black faces. I don't know what Abby is. He's Abby's Mexican. Puerto Rican. He's Puerto Rican. Yeah. See where I'm from, everyone's just Mexican. Um, <laughs> That's so fun. <laughs> but but uh, oh, you, you speak Spanish? Yeah, you're Mexico. You're I'm Mexican. from Spain. Mexican. You're Mexican. You're Mexican. That's funny. You're Mexican. Here, here's your what is it? Sombrero. What yeah. does a sombrero do? Just a hat. It's just the Spanish word for hat. Oh shit, isn't it? Huh? Yeah. It's just the Spanish word for hat. And so white people are just like, oh, it's these funny hats they wear. No, it's just all their hats. No, it's just a hat. It's all their hats. That's just what they call them. That's made me sound ignorant as fuck. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, um but this this fear of being alone, Brian. Let's let's get into it. I'm not so much afraid of being alone as much as um I don't know. I mean, I've been living by myself, so I don't really mind it anymore. But yeah, you, once you live by yourself, you're like, oh, it's actually not that bad. When you first started, how was it when you first? Well, the thing is, like, this was like probably the lonely. The last few years have probably been the loneliest I've ever been in the sense that, like, my friends all are getting married and they're all, like, moving out to the suburbs. And now it's just me in the city and all my family's busy. So it's really just been me by myself doing this comedy thing. And that's fucking. That's a major. Honestly, I owe it to this person who, who broke my heart. Why? Part of the reason I'm getting doing this special is because I worked so fucking hard at comedy because I needed to bury everything. I was like, I need to bury all these feelings. So I was like, let's do every open mic we can. Let's mm. fucking not sleep. We're going to fucking drown all this out. And it actually made me better as a comedian. So, I mean, that's... Also, I talk about a bunch at the beginning of the special. It's so I wrote a shitload of jokes about it. If you can't write jokes about the worst parts of your life, you shouldn't be a comedian. I agree. I'm excited to see this. Mm -hmm. um, where's it going to be, by the way? on that's we're gonna they're gonna shop it around so hopefully amazon because they have a relationship with amazon but they also work with apple tv most of them have ended up on tubi which is a free streaming service so we'll, well see wherever it is please let me know and I of will course watch it. um i will sit down next to you and every time i don't laugh i'm gonna look at you <laughs> that would actually be ag <laughs> that would be fucking agonizing <laughs> to like have to sit with someone in a room just, as just like the idea of doing like a like people are like yeah we, we're doing a a watch party like when people like like i know fucking marils just came out and i wonder i'm like i wonder if he did a watch party because that that would be so agonizing to sit in a room of people you know and be like let's watch me be funny. i know yeah i know andrew shawls did I, like i saw it on his instagram story that like he had a watch party I'm like i couldn't do it bro yeah i couldn't sit there and be like hey let's watch me and then get and then you know, all these people like Either they're going to laugh or they're going to fake laugh. And it's like, you know, you fucking know. A hundred percent. And it's, it's, it, there's something we, like you just, you just got all the attention. Now yeah. let some, just don't be there. Just don't be. Yeah. I, I don't, I wouldn't want to be a part of it. I wouldn't want to see people watching me. I'd be like, ugh. Be weird. And the worst part is, you know where you fucked up. Yeah. And they, and it, even if they don't, it eats your soul. You know what must feel really weird is when you make a, a comedy film yeah, and you have to show people for the first time, like a test audience, and then just sit and watch oh, them. Oh, that is weird. I see what you're saying now. Yeah. Oh, I never thought about that. Fuck. Because like, like, it's not... It's not even like you're doing stand-up where there's laughs within the experience. Yeah. That's well, like that's like a, when they film like sitcoms and it's like a live audience. It's like, oh, God, dude. What if what if, what if if the joke bombs? They probably... They, they bring someone out with a, a scientist <laughs> laugh or will fucking shoot you. They... Uh, <laughs> you've, have you seen... Uh, you've seen Big Bang Theory without the laugh track? No. Oh, I'll send it, it to you. It's haunting. I'll send it to me. It's, it's that show's fun. trash, dude. Yes. And I is. know that because uh, I worked I worked at a company, and this dude at this desk next to me used to watch it every fucking day at lunch. That or wrestling. He watched it every day at lunch. And I was like, you enjoy this? I was like, I haven't heard a single joke yet. I, I Kaylee Cuoco's hot. We get it. <laughs> These guys are nerds. Yes. Cool. This guy has Asperger's. And honestly, <laughs> they aren't even that big of nerds because they're actors. Yeah. Yeah. They. It, it's... I, the only real nerd on that show was uh, Amy, whatever her name is. I can't even think of what her real her real name is. Amy something. She's the Jeopardy host now. Oh, good for her. She has a neuroscience degree. She's the only genuine nerd on that show. I'm like, she's the only one where I'm like, yeah, she's a nerd. The rest of them are just actors. Yeah, they're just actors. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, she like she like has like a she like knows her shit. I had a um, I filmed a special filmed a special for a guy who 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 okay. I'm going to try to figure out how to word this. He's dead, by the way. Oh, God. Yeah. So he, 
I'm not gonna say his name. Drugs? No. Uh, so he was involved in mafia shit. Oh, whoa, that's yeah. wild. Yeah, he was a big biker looking guy. And Holy shit. Yeah, and we, me and my crew made a, we we put on a show at this theater in my, where I was yeah. from. And he saw it. And he, he was, was like, a stand up? He was a stand up. Oh, okay. I got Meaning you. he had his jokes and he. And if he didn't laugh, he'd kill you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was very interesting to see because I was so new in comedy and I didn't understand. The mob's fascinating to me. Yeah. The, well, the, you, I'll, I'll, I'll send you this book. It's uh, Operation Family Secrets. It's set here. It's Frank Calabrese. I would love to turn it into a movie. I actually started writing a script for it. It's a That's pain. Awesome. It's a pain in the ass to write a script out of a book. Do you have the physical copy of it? Yeah, I oh, do. Thank God. Yeah. I've been reading. I I can't read this anymore. Yeah. It's too depressing. Oh God. Yeah. No, that's sad. Yeah, yeah. But I please, I would Fred love Hampton. to read. Would, yeah, no, it's 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 insane, dude. Like they detail they detail murders in this book, and you're like, I live around there. Really? Yeah, you're like, oh, that's not far from me. That's what's so fucking awesome about Chicago. They buried a body right by fucking Sox Park. And I'm like, really? I know exactly where that is. Do they have like a, a little stick cross there? or is it? No, just... no, they, they just knew where the bodies were. And like fucking. Is it yeah. under concrete now? Like they just no, no, they, they went and got the bodies. Oh, that's good. Yeah, they went. Uh, yeah. No, dude, this dude, Frank Calabrese Jr., my dad went to high school with him, mm. played football with him. He'd been to this dude's house. His father was in the mob. And forced his son to be in the mob with him, which never, which you find out in the book, they don't do. They never make their kids be in the mob. Like, That's not normal. No, it's not normal. Fucking so, like all these like movies where it's like the Godfather, where, like the kid takes over. They don't do that in the mob. They want the kid to go be something like legitimate, right. so it legitimizes them as as their parents. It's and also then, grimy, but yeah, yeah it's all, it's grimy, but fucking so it legitimizes them, and also this way they don't have to be in the mafia, and like they could also fucking launder money through their businesses, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, gotta keep the money flowing. But uh, you find out, like, dude, this book is so. It's honestly one of the best books I ever read. I fucking read it in like a week. You made me excited. Yeah, it was so good, dude. And the thing is, like, because he's like just a Chicago guy, it's written in a way where you can read it. Where you're yeah. like, oh yeah, this is palpable. Because sure. like, oh, I can. He just words it where it's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's fascinating. He read it his own dad out. It's like what you end up finding out. Like it, it, they talk about the beginning of the book. Right, right. Like it's like the first. Literally, it's like the first sentence. Do you do you think you could you could rat out your your family? Fuck no. Really? No. Twenty five to life. You can rat out your, even if they did the thing. There's no really. Uh, depends which family member. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, some of my cousins are going down. It's it's man that that's a that's a weird one. The whole snitch that you you Takashi six nine. Oh told. yeah, I. That of all the things he did, that's one of the things where I was like, "Yeah, I have no problem with that decision." Snitching? Yeah. Well, and, I mean, yeah. What yeah. The, look at his hair. He would he would have gotten <laughs> fucking destroyed in prison. Been done. I he's yo, snitching. I I I don't think. I think if you if you can do it blissfully, he didn't do it blissfully. Is the problem? Yeah. You got to do it by the undercover. You can't let people know. No, right. I think he had to. And the, had to. yeah, well, yeah, he had to for the because the public trial. Right. But the thing is, his whole thing was like, I'm a gangster, and then he's like, I'm actually a snitch. Yeah. I'm like, just I'm just a guy with colored hair. Yeah, I just colored my hair and I talk aggressively. Do you, do you have you you? I know you listen to rap. Do you rap? No. Okay. I'm, I'm oh, like, Hunter Hirsch yesterday sent me a fucking rap really? like for like a, I got I haven't I didn't actually re- did he, he Hunter I'm sorry I didn't actually read it I just saw it and I was like I gotta read that later can we read that now No I'm not gonna do that to Hunter All right, but uh, no he sent me like he's like yeah you should do like a rap thing for like a promotion and I was like I didn't even read it I literally because he sent it to me I think we were drinking already I should get him on the podcast Oh you have to Hunter's the I fucking love that kid so much Okay I'm gonna hit him up after this. Oh yeah, definitely, dude. I love that kid. That dude is so fucking funny. I um, I know he plays guitar. He plays, dude. He's so talented at so many things, yeah. and he he downplays it because he's a little tizzed up. Yeah. But um, Here no, yeah. I I talked to him. I've talked to him a few times, and I know I know he's brought up that he had. Is he, is it autism? Mm-hmm. What? There's a spectrum. Yeah, it's a spectrum. Okay. He, he he's fine. I mean, yeah. he just has a hard time talking to people. I mean, I don't. We have a hard time talking. Yeah, to I I yeah, dude. I, I don't know how to start conversations. That's the thing is, like, everyone, like, you, like, th- it, it still bothers me that you didn't think I, I was a, like, friendly person. That still bothers you? It bothers me. Really? I think, I literally think about it in the car when I'm, like, driving. I'm, like. I think about a lot of moments. Yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> what did I do? No, the thing is, like, yeah. I think I come off, like, as aggressive seeming because, like, I just, I'm, I'm, I am a shy person. Hmm. And then I'm also, like, I have a serious looking face. Yeah. 
So, I mean, when you just see me sitting there, people are like, hey, someone else told me that too. They're like, "Yeah, hey, you come off as like aggressive. I'm like, just your face though. I'm like, okay, <laughs> thanks. I think I'm a pretty friendly guy. It's, you are, it's, it's getting past this. Um... Well, that's the thing is I'm, I'm super shy. And, mm. and then once you get, I get to know someone, I'm fucking annoying. <laughs> Oh, I haven't seen you be annoying yet. So. Well, we don't hang out that often. That's fair. We don't. We see each other sporadically. It's enough to where it's not weird, I don't think. It's funny. That's, yeah. Let me tell you, it's the perfect amount for you. Is it? If it, was, if it was like an everyday thing, you'd be like, this motherfucker. Like, I know some of my best friends when I can tell when they're like, all right, shut the fuck up. Really? I'm working on that. Like, because I'll talk. I'm ADHD, man. I'll fucking, I for sure have ADHD. I can't sit in a room for too long. I fucking, I can't pay attention to anything for too long. So have you hit the point with me where you feel comfortable? Yeah, we're talking like this. Fucking, I don't care. Okay. See, okay, there, there it is. There's that moment. It's you, I, and I said it in the old podcast. Uh, I said, you have in a, like an aggressive laissez-faire. Oh, yeah. The yeah. way you, yeah, I don't care. It, there's oh, something yeah. about it where it feels like it's aggressive, but in reality, it's not. You're aggressively laissez-faire. Yeah, and and I think that's what it is. It's not. Yeah, but I. That's how I was raised. I was raised around savages. Yeah, and it sounds like around mafiosos to some degree. You're like a one step. Two there's steps. a there's at least one or there's a few people in our family where I've always been like I think they're in the mob. They're not like they they weren't blood relatives. They were like ma- people that were like married in our family, and I, I always was like that dude owns a flower shop. I'm like, <laughs> and it's still open even through yeah, COVID. I'm like I'm like. I feel like he's, I can't say a name, but I, I was always like, I feel like he's in the mob. My, my entire childhood, I was like. I don't know why the mob is so interesting to me. Like, it's fascinating. Well, it's criminal organizations are fascinating. Yeah. Because like, it's like, it's, it's an organization based on crime. So it's like doing this thing that should be disorganized in an organized way. It's, it's impressive. Yeah it's, yeah. it's hard to do. It's not easy to do Crime, crime at, at a scale like that. It's it's because it's at a scale like that where right. they're like, oh, we're laundering thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's like that's an impressive thing to do, actually. Yeah. When you look at it, you're like, that's pretty impressive. You're like, and to get away with it for a while is what makes it impressive. That's yeah. like that's why people are fascinated by serial killers because they get away with it for so long. I think, but don't most serial killers almost want to get caught by the end? Yeah. Well, that's the, well, we were talking about it last night. I didn't realize this. Most serial killers actually have super low IQs. And that's why they, because they think so abnormally, that's why people can't catch them. Please keep, okay. So, like, we were talking about, like, because Dan Drees is a comedian, and he was talking about, like, I forget, like, some book or something, but, uh, or somebody knows that, like, is an FBI profiler. Mm. He was like, yeah, most serial killers have super low IQs. And also, they classify anyone who does more than three murders in a certain time frame as a serial killer, apparently. So, if you do So, at any, yeah, you're not a serial killer, but if you do three, it's like, like if it's a guy, well, it was funny because the way he worded it last night is like, let's say it's a guy in a trailer park. It's like, my goddamn wife's annoying me, kills her. Right. My buddy's annoying me, kills him. This guy's annoying me, kills him. I'm like, well, there's a trend there. I'm like, there's a trend. They're annoying. You really don't like to be They're annoying. annoying. Yeah. So there's a trend. But no, if you do it in like, like a, I think it's in like a certain time frame, if it's more than three within like two or three years or something like that, then you're considered a serial killer. And at any point in time, he told me, there are 300 active serial killers in America. I believe that. Uh, yeah, dude, there's one on the south side. Uh, yeah. 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 There's a lot of... Do you, you hear about that? They, they found like a bunch of prostitutes in like dumpsters over the past few years. No, that makes me sad. Yeah, it really bumps you out. Yeah. So, sorry if you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, and it's like, ugh. And it's like, yeah, but dude, they, they, they don't get caught because they don't think like normal people. They So they're dumb. They're just very confident in themselves. It's dumb confidence and also it's... Uh, it's like an abnormal way of thinking, so you don't think about how they would how they would move. Right. Like a normal person would be like, I'm gonna do this and this and this to try to get away with it. They're just like, I'm just gonna do this. And it's almost so simple. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, uh, oh, wow. What's his name? The Zodiac Killer. Yeah. I, did they figure out who that was? No, oh, never figured out. I thought they I thought they did because of uh, Patton Oswalt's wife. No, that was a guy in San. F- Wait, was it San Francisco? Yeah, Zodiac Killer. Get the fuck, hold on. Yeah, it was Patton Oswalt's wife figured out who it was. Is that, well, his wife who passed away. Patton Oswalt's wife, serial killer. I, I like that you you, you, you served it. pictures that match. Showing pictures. Meet Tyra Moore. No. Oh, that's panel walls. Okay. Because I totally didn't say Patton Oswalt. Well, that's the thing, dude. Is uh, Whenever I do Surrey or something, I go, do I talk like a fucking idiot? Yeah. Because I was I'm like, is, is that, did it pick me up saying that? 
Okay, in April 2018, HBO documentary film acquired rights, whatever, with plans to adapt that isn't helping me. Well, let's see. I'm about to lose interest in this. No, I'll find it. Don't worry. Thank you. While you're looking it up, um, Oswald. The, I, I couldn't. I couldn't kill. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't got it. I don't got that. Whatever that is, I don't got that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I well, here's the thing: is uh, Patton Oswalt's wife obsession to catch a California serial killer let HBO I'll be gone in the dark. But is that the Zodiac killer? Because I'm looking to see guy, Michelle but. McNamara. While you're looking oh, it up, yeah. uh, Golden State Killer. That's what it was. Never okay. mind. Which is another prolific. Which is another prolific. Yeah. Good for good for Damn. his wife. That was Zodiac. Yeah, I guess I'll never know. Um, but it was the Zodiac killer smart? Well, I guess we don't know because we, we don't, don't know. We don't know who yeah. it is. Yeah. But I. What's well, the thing is like the Unabomber was a was a genius. And he's not a serial killer. He's not a serial killer though. He just had a manifesto and blew shit up. Now where does the okay? So a serial killer has to do a one-on-one murder. Yeah. And then a he, Unabomber would be a terrorist. Terrorist. Yeah. He was a domestic terrorist. A large yeah. group of people. So yeah. you could argue. My that, buddy slept with a terrorist. She she got arrested for uh, terroristic threats towards an institution. Which is hilarious. We still, I, I still make fun of him for it. What? Yeah, Are you it wasn't like about this? it wasn't like an actual terrorist. Okay, okay. It was like it was someone who got in trouble for being like, I, I'm sure they probably like said some fucked s- up stuff s- to someone and then like fucking got arrested for it. I thought, I yeah. thought I was. But picturing... it's funny to say it's funny to say my buddy slept with a terrorist. <laughs> I thought he that's was fucking like hilarious. Asleep and she was taping some bombs together while he was like, fucking naked asleep in her. He's bed. like, yeah, you know, she got her hobbies. <laughs> but the old birds got her hobbies. I don't know where she goes at night. But I think it's 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 arguably worse to be a terrorist than a serial killer. Yeah, because you're the numbers and purely on the numbers thing. Mm, I mean, it depends. I mean, right? So like, um, I mean, because serial killers, it's like it's like gruesome a lot of times. Yeah. It's so like personal. It's personal. Yeah. Versus yeah. so like it's, it's the scale of it. But no, dude, fucking, uh, dude, that's a the Unabomber. That's a fascinating thing. I found out. Uh, you know what MK Ultra is? No. Okay, so it's a, it was actually a conspiracy theory that turned out to be true. So the government was giving people acid. They were giving people LSD. They were trying to make super soldiers? No, no, no. They were trying to see if they could manipulate people mm. using acid. Truth serum. Yeah, and they were doing that shit for decades. They did it for decades. And they were doing it to, like, like white, you know Whitey Bulgers? Mm-hmm. The mafia? They did it to him. And, like, so, like, a lot of people were like, oh, these dudes who are insane... It might have been because of MK Ultra. I, I I got down this rabbit hole because I heard about it and I fucking MK Ultra is the title of it. It's like, the title of the program. Okay, so it's like Cointel so, Pro. Yeah, MK yeah. Ultra. Okay. MK Ultra. So there's actually a movie about it. Uh, um, Jesse Eisenberg stars in it. It's so fucking ridiculous. Is he good? Yeah, it's a good movie. It's okay. a solid. It's a good laugh. Okay. But like it, it was it was like the MK Ultra program. Like he was asleep. He's a sleeper cell. It's it's really funny. Oh. Oh, American Ultra. Ameri- yeah, American Ultra. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. about MK Ultra. Yeah, but dude, yeah, fucking that Jesse Eisenberg as, as an assassin, hilarious. It is very. Funny. It's fucking hilarious. But um, no, dude. So like, MK Ultra was like a program that they they ran to like see if they could manipulate people using high doses of acid. They fucked up a lot of people with it. Yeah, when you, when you get down the rabbit holes of our government, it's really dark. Yeah, like it's fascinating. Like the uh, cons- some conspiracy theories, like eh, there's some legitimate. I think that's what makes them difficult. Yeah, is that like with the QAnon? Well, people, most conspiracy theorists don't actually. They've they've proven this. Most conspiracy theorists don't believe the things they're saying. They just like being contrarians. I can see so that. like once it becomes true, then they fucking hate that conspiracy theory. Like flat Earth. Yeah, like well, that's fuck, that's provable. There's so they, there was a dude who proved it on a documentary. It was hilarious. On an accident. Yeah. yeah, he was like, it was the. Did you you ever see that experiment? Yeah. Uh, where it's the light. The, Mm-hmm. Yeah, where if the Earth curved, then you wouldn't be able to see the light. And he's like, hold it up above your head. And he's like, huh, interesting. And he still kept going, <laughs> right? Yeah, and he's like, no, 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 you know, it's got to be. Dude, I, uh, TikTok, I don't know how this has happened, mm. but, like, TikTok has, like, live, like, you can go live on TikTok. And I keep getting this one person who, like, runs, like, a, apparently you can go live with multiple people. I keep, like, this one person, I love watching it because it's so fascinating. Mm. But this one person keeps popping up with a live video where they're, prove uh discuss if it's there's a flat earth or not is like the forum and like they have multiple people on there and there's a bunch of science people being like <laughs> explaining things and then you hear what the flat earthers have to say and you're like are you out of your goddamn mind yeah you're saying the most ridiculous things just to be ridiculous do you, do you, do you, that's so like the whole uh the whole thing with epstein where like epstein killed himself most conspiracy theorists are like yeah he killed himself 
where the majority of people are like, no, he definitely did not. Wait, what What do you believe? Uh, oh, no way he killed himself. Okay. Expl- I don't know anything about that. So, like, dude, he, like, when you look at the facts, it was like this this monster of a human being was the bodyguard or was the, was the guard at the time. Okay. And, like, it's like, yeah, he probably strangled him. But, like, dude, but, like, uh... Someone paid that. Someone paid to have that dude killed. So there is still conspiracy within the yeah. death. Yeah, yeah. But mo- but the thing is, most people have been like, Epstein didn't kill himself. But I've seen a lot of cons- people who are conspiracy theorists be like, no, he killed himself. So I- the conspiracy, the the crazy people are the ones who think he did actually kill. Yeah, himself. they're like they're like, but they're doing it just to be contrarian. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. That's annoying. Yeah. It's it's funny because it is kind of what we do as comics. Oh we yeah. Contrarians, but. I think if you're going to be a contrarian, when you, you do be it seriously, yeah, when you do it seriously, it's like oh, right. this is annoying. Um, speaking of TikTok and trends, did you did you end up having to unfortunately learn about Andrew Tate? Yeah, no, no, dude, I know about him because the podcast. I love the podcast that basically made him famous. Your mom's house. That's right. Yeah, because so, they they featured him being like, if you don't drink water with bubbles, you're a fucking idiot. And it's like, what? <laughs> I know he's been deplatformed. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is, and then it's funny because like he released a statement where he's like, he was all for entertainment. It's like, you're a pussy. It's like, either stand behind the kid. If it is a character, then you should have came out with that a long time ago. But it, it clearly is not. Or it needs to be so abs- uh Fucking, what's his name? Hey, what's in the bowl, bitch? What's, what the fuck is <laughs> Oh, uh, Andrew Dice Andrew Dice Clay is so obviously a cartoon. Oh, yeah. it's a, he is. Most people don't realize he's a character and he... He became became the character. The character. It was like, all right, I guess I'm just gonna live as the character. It's fascinating because his real name is uh, it's, it's a Jewish name. I yeah. can't even think of what it is. But but with with Andrew Tate, like he's claiming it's a character, but that seems like his real. No, that's that's how that dude is. Right, and I know I've seen him. They get, he's a kickboxer. Like beating women. Oh shit! And really? I, yeah. And I what know a he, scumbag. He moved He's also to, a kickboxer. Yeah. Uh, he wore, He won some championships. I know he moved to Scandinavia or whatever to evade rape charges. Holy shit! Yeah, what a piece of he's shit. A very not good person. Damn, bro. Um, what are you gonna do? <sighs> Shitty people, man. They're yeah. everywhere. Well, then I feel. Well, okay. Obviously, I don't think I've ever done anything as atrocious as someone like Andrew Tate. Yeah. But then I also am like, yeah, but I'm not a good person. There's levels to everything, man. So there's levels. It's fucking. It's scalable. I mean, every person doesn't. I've said plenty of things where I'm like, yeah, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, so have I. Yeah, there's plenty of things where I'm like, <laughs> oh, shouldn't have said that. There's, there's been more than a few times where I'm like, mm, whoopsie. Yeah. What is that? Do you? You've 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 been around some of my snafus. Do you? What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> What is? Oh, I know the one. I know the one. Yeah, there's one in particular. Uh, And we're back, folks. Wow, uh, what a whirlwind! We can, we can. There's, there's a whole coded fucking conversation in there, and if you you listen to it, you're gonna be like, "What the fuck was going on?" It's a lot, but that was fun. No, but and and to to take it away from such a negative place, I am getting to a place where I'm understanding myself. Yeah, that's good. And those types of moments don't happen as much. yeah no self-reflection is huge yeah, yeah, yeah no yeah, yeah. I, I agree i mean um, you got that uh you got you got that fucking my own oh, scroll my. hanging on the wall <laughs> it does look like some shit out of aladdin doesn't it it's no the, i know it is the uh it's the, the pillars of the chakra yeah, yeah. it man do you uh do you ever listen to the uh sound bath Mm-mm. you know what sound bath is Mm-mm. so it's basically based on that um i found i found it because i've gotten into asmr <laughs> Do you know what ASMR is? Yeah, I love ASMR. Yeah. You've recently gotten to the shit? Yeah, because like, because uh, I always thought it was ridiculous. And I was like, oh, I guess there's, and then I listened to one. I'm like, oh, I see it now. What type of ASMR? Hot chicks. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Jokes. No, it's, uh, no, I don't know. Just um, like people like talking. Like I, uh, this is. The this, whisper. Yeah. So like this has been a, a thing that happens a lot. Uh, there's been plenty of women who can attest to this. That like, I'll, if like I'm talking to like someone on the phone, like right before I'm about to go to bed, I will fall asleep. Like, there's been plenty of women. Like, hey, you fell asleep. We were talking on the phone. It's a compliment. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you have a soothing voice. I'm like, I, I don't want to tell you. I fucking was tired, and you talked me to sleep. Yeah. And I, I just wanted to listen to you, really. Have you done the the one with candy and eating? Oh yeah, I've done those. Uh, I don't, I'm not too huge on the mouth sounds. Okay. But uh, like, there's like uh, there's this one. Louisa ASMR I listen to where she like she does like uh like it's like tapping on shit mm. and then there's like but the, the, through all that I found these sound bath things and it's just like uh crystal bowls 
that they like they like spin like the this rod around and like they're supposed to be based they're different sizes and like they're supposed to be like a frequency that like matches your chakra ma- yeah matches and they're like the heart the it ma- it lines up with all the things in the chakras the heart the mind the the soul all those things yeah i'm gonna listen to those yeah i bought headphones that like I bought those? I bought headphones that are literally designed they're in a headband they're inside a headband right. so I could wear them a- as I sleep and fucking they like th- you have grown Brian yeah you can actually be alone right now yeah you didn't I swear when I first met you you physically couldn't do it and I'm good wow live and grow baby live and grow gotta learn to love yourself I can't I can't wait for like another year we do another episode of Walmart. <laughs> He's a nightmare. Just needles sticking out of your arm. Oh, it wasn't good. I should have. I should have been alone. Who did it? Who let me be alone? God damn it! Uh, Shit. Oh my god. I'm. <laughs> I'm. It's so funny. I'm so like happy. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. I, I'm like, I'm happy for you and your. I'm learning to fucking just enjoy moments. That's, yeah. that's what I found out lately. I'm like, you know what? Just. And you're only here for so long, and I'm terrified of dying. But it's like I also refuse to. Um, it's not going to happen. I, it's not going to. Right, right. I, dude, I, I heard Christ on a podcast the other day. He goes, yeah, I don't believe in death. And I was like, huh? I was like, what? And so I was like, what does that mean? He's like, you know, it's kind of the thing where if I just don't believe in it. Then when it happens, I'm like, oh, shit, I was wrong. Bert Kreischer is a fascinating creature. He's a lunatic. He really is. I love a, it. He, He's one of those celebrities who I sincerely wouldn't, like, get annoyed by. Oh, I would, I, me and him would have a great time. Really? <laughs> oh, we, we would kick. I, I'm very much a let's do. Him and me have, here's the thing. I would like Tom Segura, Burt Kreischer, love them both. I watched their like podcast and them together, and I'm like, oh, I'm kind of both of these people in like different ways. Where like Segura is like serious in a way, and Kreischer is like ah, it's fun. I'm like Kreischer in the way where it's like if this is what everybody's doing, then that's what I'm gonna do. So it's like oh, well, we're gonna go drink. It's like let's go fucking drink. Or it's like let's uh, let's hang out and just chill. I'm like all right, we're gonna just chill. Throw me a Lacroix. Do you, can you go hard? Can you go as hard as he can go? Yeah, really, dude. Last night I don't. I could probably count it out on my hands. I probably had like. 10 beers or some shit like no problem and, you, and we're here right now yeah and i went to bed at 3 30 and you're like 29 i'm built different okay. son the okay. rows are built different my grandfather's about to turn 90 and someone sent me pictures of him ripping shots the other day it says the guy who can't take mushrooms well i can't do like psychedelics mm-hmm. right did you see uh you know adam gilbert right yeah he was on uh, the Stefano's podcast, Chris Stefano. Yeah, and he gave Chris Stefano mushrooms. I saw that. It clip. was so fucking funny. I saw that clip. He that dude moved, yeah. He moved to mm-hmm. New York. Yeah, he's doing great. You love to see it. Uh, I wish I could have done the podcast with him before he left. Ah, uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe when he comes back sometime. I mean, yeah. he's popping back and forth. Well, that's good. But yeah, he he's great. I fucking love that kid. Is there he's anybody, so funny. Is there anybody? How old is he? Gilbert. He's got to be about thirty. Okay, you just called that grown man a kid. Is that the Chicago thing? Oh, yeah. I call everybody kid. Really? Yeah. Weird. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I do that. To, I do that to people who are 40 years old, dude. Huh. I don't know. It's just it's my vernacular. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's not bad. I'm just realizing that's like a real Chicago thing. Yeah, I've no. never heard that shit. In- it's a major city thing. Yeah. Hey, so kid, like, the kid. Like people in New York do it, too. In Boston. Yeah. Okay. So like an East Coast, Midwest city mm. thing. Yeah, it's definitely not a West Coast thing. You don't call people kid. You call no. them like... Dog. Dog. Homie. Dog. Get hey, hey, what's up, Essie? Hey, 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 what's, hey, fool. Yeah, dude, those those dudes are wild. Those dudes are crazy. Those dudes are like, they're li- whenever, I, whenever I hear a dude talking like that, I'm like, that guy's that guy's probably, and that guy could beat the shit out of he me. does some shit. Yeah. I remember. I remember. That was that was one of the scarier things. Anytime a group of dudes would come up to you and say, hey, what's up, fool? It's like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, this That's is- sad, dude. That's like a get out of there situation. Yeah. 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 Oh, immediately. Um, Did you... Are there, are there any like, hey, fool? Is there any of that over here? Yeah, there's a little bit. Yeah, there's like, there's the Latin Kings and there's, there's gangs in Chicago. Uh, yeah. There's Bloods, Crips. Yeah. Like the mo- there's mobs and there's gangs. I don't feel in danger here. No, no. It's like it's very it's very area based, right? So it's like, and the thing is like. Gang activity isn't like how you think gang activity is. Like they portray it in a specific way, yeah. but really, when you look at it, it's like, oh, these people 
started this because it's like, all right, this is our neighborhood. Yeah. And these people, are, we watch over our neighborhood. And then it kind of escalated into a thing. The like, history. if you watch a documentary about gangs, it's like, oh, it's similar to the mob. It's like, okay, these are my people. Right. And we're going to watch out for each other. And then it's like, all right, well, we need to make money, so we're going to do crime. And it expands yeah. to a place that gets really crazy. Mm-hmm. And I know, to go back to COINTELPRO, I know Entropy. That was, things head towards disorder. It's how it happens. Um, but, I mean, like in first moving here as much as i fought the whole chicago was dangerous there's always that little piece of you when you go to a different place it's not dude i'll be saying i'm looking at his fucking picture right now i'll be fucking i'll be has a great joke where he's like no one ever talks about three million people in chicago had a great fucking weekend yeah it's like yeah that's so true yeah every time i hear that joke i'm like that's 100 percent true do you remember people comment shit like online like oh chicago i'm like the whole goddamn world's dangerous. Yeah. Open Twitter. The whole yeah. the whole, fucking. I have a joke where I'm doing about it right now about being held up at gunpoint, and it's like, and it's like, yeah. I, and in the joke, I'm like, whenever I say it, someone's like, Chicago it wasn't even Chicago. It was the suburbs. Guess what? Whole world's dangerous. Deal with it. Yes. I talking to him. Uh, Abby is. Uh, he's very. He's a great dude. He is very, and he's very. Um, uh, He's a perfect uncle at a barbecue. Oh my god, that's a great way to describe him. I want to go to a barbecue. I want to. I want to. I want to write a movie just to cast in this one. <laughs> this can I just, can I just say I love this photo album. It makes it. It makes it. Uh, it's like a connective thing, right? Yeah, it feels. It doesn't like. There's something about taking this picture. Oh, that's Zacco. Yeah, yeah. Zacco was a whole other. Have you seen his episode? No. Do you know anything about his upbringing? Yeah, yeah, I know. God, South, damn. South Carolina, uh, stepdad. Isn't he like Puerto Rican? Uh, something like that. Yeah. But he his 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 background was fucking wild to me. Have you had Gabe Alviso on here? Uh uh-uh. uh. You should have Gabe. Gabe's fucking great. Can you tell him to message me? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell him. Thank yeah. you. Gabe's a great. Gabe would be a. Gabe's a great person to do because speaking of like the essay fool fool thing, yeah. he talks about it all the time. I tell him it's so funny when he does it. It's it's so because he's from the he's from the West Coast. Oh, I want yeah, to this dude. yeah. No, he's from the West Coast. He's okay. and like he's like a he's so fascinating. He's a graffiti artist. Yeah. He uh, he have you seen his pictures that he takes? Uh-uh. He does headshots. They're fucking beautiful. Oh, um, he does like the best. He does some of, like the best headshots I've seen. Dude, the ones he did of Hunter are fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's Hunter's like shirtless playing guitar. It's so fucking funny. Let me see if I can find it. Did he give him abs like a lot of? No, no, no. It's just fucking hilarious, dude. <laughs> he's, he's also just a good dude. That's that's good. Yeah, man. The whole enjoying moments. It's what is it? Um, one of the things I've been trying to live by is the the phrase "This too shall pass." Yeah, dude, that's a. Did you, did you ever see the Tom Hanks thing? Uh, which which he does many things. Um, there was like they do like that round table. <laughs> they do like that round table. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just showed him this video of, or this picture of Hunter's headshot shirtless. That's like if H and M gave up. Oh my God, this is beautiful. Yeah, dude, Gabe's a great photographer. Get, okay, so I got to talk to Gabe and I got to talk to Hunter. Yeah, they're okay. great, dude. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Oh my God, this is it. This is the one I was looking for. <laughs> It's beautiful. It's fantastic. Hunter, yeah. you look fantastic. No yeah. body shaming over here. No, he looks great. Um, what the fuck are we saying? I don't even know. Um, oh, uh, this too shall pass, and then you said something. Yeah, about- yeah. Well, uh, Tom Hanks, they do like these. Uh, they're like these actor roundtable things where they had like actors talk to each other. And Tom Hanks, uh, they're like, uh, they ask them like, what's a, what's like a thing that you like live by? And Tom Hanks goes, this too shall pass. He's like, I wish I knew that when I was younger. He's like, oh, you think everything's terrible? This too shall pass. You think everything's great? This too shall pass. Because like, even when things are good, mm-hmm. things are gonna get bad. It's it's the natural ebb and flow of life. Dude, you have yeah. to learn to you have to learn to live with it. And I'm learning to. Live I'm with learning it. to embrace. One of the things I, I've learned this past year is you have to embrace the negatives because they all they they're just as important as all the positive shit that happens. And I usually lean into the pot. Like when you go through the negative, it takes you to the positive. Yeah, it, yeah, inevitably you're gonna go through these cycles and things will be good, things will be bad. Dude, we're and so woke. <laughs> No, we're so awesome. I'm not. I'm uh, fucking. I'm just more self-aware. More self-aware than you were a year ago. I mean, I think you get more and more self-aware consistently. Like my I therapist feel. is even like, yeah, he's like, you're a pretty self-aware person. He's like, you just can't handle certain things, like death, dying. Death, yeah. Right. Okay. Can we let's get into death? Real I will have a full-blown panic attack if we talk about it for too long. Yeah. Okay. Tell and me. you don't want to see one of my panic attacks. They are bad. Yeah, you told me about hitting, p- punching walls and shit, or jumping. Yeah. You jump, you jump, jump. You hit I, your head. I, yeah. Well, that that was a bad one. My room. <laughs> if you, do we need a safe word, or you could really no, no. Just stop talking about. I'll it? just stop talking about it. It's the it's the not knowing. I'm not right. good with not knowing things. I'm a very controlling person. Let's say, let's say it's heaven. 
let's say you die and it's like, oh, fuck. I mean, probably wouldn't say fuck. I don't know. I don't know how. I, I think I would actually. I'd be like, oh, oh fuck! fuck. Too this. late now, and then you fucking get dropped down. That was a that's <laughs> such a funny concept. <laughs> you swore! Oh no! <laughs> Why did you say I couldn't? <laughs> so so let's say okay, let's say not heaven. Let's say it's purgatory. Well, I think that's the catalyst. Oh that god, we're yeah. So you're in this middle space where you, <sighs> if I understand the thought process correctly. It's like a waiting space. Right. If you listen to The Weeknd's new album, that's the whole thing's about that. Really? Yeah, yeah it's fascinating. Like, it's so fascinating. It's, uh, so his last two albums actually are like streamlining towards a thing, right? Mm-hmm. So like um, the first one, what is it called? Let me pull it up so I can tell you. I don't want to fuck. I don't want to flood this. So The Weeknd, his one album with... Uh, blinding lights on it the really po- after hours after hours is him being here on earth living life crazy and then he dies in it so if you watch the music videos he dies and then um if you the next one is dawn fm and it's him being in purgatory and it's like uh that's like that's why they have they, it's actually really cool they have um jim carrey is it featured in it a bunch in the album because like it's jim carrey has a beautiful poem that he reads at the end fucking you should listen to it phantom regrets but like it's about like uh it's about like being stuck in purgatory and like if you watch the music video they're all at like a nightclub and like the weekend's older and it's like well he's been stuck in purgatory is like the the concept and then the next one's supposed to be heaven i guess and or hell we'll find out yeah and that the idea of purgatory scares you the idea of nothingness scares me because all i've known is things and I, here's the thing i explained it to because tucker brookshire loves fucking with me um about this and like him and i were talking with another comic about like they said they were afraid of dying too, and they're like, oh, well, a lot of people's fear of death is just like the idea of like it being painful. Like my therapist said, he's afraid of dying because of the idea of painfulness. And as they went on, he's like, yeah, now he's like, he, he's like, it kind of wrote me into the fear of not knowing. I was like, good. I'm like, join the club, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's the it's the unknowingness. But also, I love life, dude. I love being alive. I love fucking living every day. I love. Everything. I love the negatives, the positives. I love being here so much. I love making people laugh. I love my family and friends. And it's just the idea of not having that anymore scares me. Do you do you feel like if you knew, let's say let's say starting now you you just definitively knew here's what's gonna happen. Good, bad, ugly, whatever it is, would that then cure it? Or would it be like, oh no, now I know Yeah, now it'd be worse. Okay. So is it about not knowing? Hmm. I think it's the it's the lack of control of it is really what it comes down to. I'm a very controlling person. And you haven't had any big deaths in your life yet, have you? No, I've had plenty. Oh, okay. My my grandfather died like two weeks ago. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, it is it is a weird situation. I I can't get into the details of, but fucking yeah, no. There's a lot we probably shouldn't have even brought up. Yeah, no, who cares? You know, family problems. My grandma died. uh, My grandma on my dad's side died in 2011, Mm. cancer. Um. My grandmother on my mom's side died four years ago in July. Four years ago, less. It was 2018 July. Mm. Fell down. Fell down stairs. Yeah. It's oh now you're making me. Now I'm see the thing. Okay, so for me, it's not fear. It becomes a a real dark sadness. So like I I've been itching to visit home. You know, I've talked so much yeah. shit about Riverside this past year. I want to visit now. I want to see yeah. my grandma before I can't see my grandma. Anymore. That's important. I yeah. think you should. Um, you I had, give me some money my, so I can get no. no. My cousin. The thing is, like, it's also like uh, my cousin um, passed away right before COVID. Like from COVID? No, no, he passed away. Uh, he had cancer. It took like it took him. I don't fucking know. It was like a year. It was like one of the most aggressive forms of cancer you could have. He was like a strong, like healthy dude. He was a detective. And like, and then like a year later, it was just gone. So I mean, it is like the lack of control of it's terrifying. And like, uh, dude, that that was great. That dude was so liked. Literally, his fu- his funeral was like right before COVID. I'm like, that might have been a super spreader event <laughs> because literally, it was there was literally a line of people waiting. There was a line around the block waiting to like pay their respects to him. What month would that have been? In two- March. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Man, this podcast. 
Yeah, you know, can everything. I say, can I say, I'm very, I'm also proud of this podcast. I'm Why? proud of what it's become. Yeah, no, it's good. You're growing. Thank you. It's, it feels. Consistency is the only way to grow. The, I, I like the consistency of it and it feels like it's. It, I really do feel like you get to know all these people in yeah. a way that I don't think other podcasts, at least in the city, do. Is that Ty? That's yeah. funny as fuck. Yeah. We're looking e- extra uncle Yeah. Um, but but I feel like you get to know... I was with Jeff last night. Oh, yeah? It was okay. his birthday. Oh, so uh, I didn't get invited, huh? No, I, I he just happened to be at the same place I went to. Okay, I'm going to message Jeff. Yeah? He's like, hey, bitch. Where- I think they were all watching football, and then I went over to where they, that sounds they not, were. Not my thing anymore. Yeah. Um... No, the just just like I think I'm go I'm I've been going into a tri- okay. Let me gather my thoughts. Yeah, there you go. Cuz this so, is what happens. It's important to sometimes you got to take a step back and piece it together. And that's I've gotten better at, but that's where we that's, run into the issues. Yeah, that's where a lot of people run into issues. Um I that consistency is important, but I did take a break. I took my first comedy break. I remember I don't know we pop up and see each other every now and yeah. then. Yeah. No, you took like a few months off, I know. I did. I took like a month and a half to two months off and it was so difficult because, mm-hmm. you know, people like, it's like, I need to keep, I'm, I'm not doing it. Well, I did, and this is like, this is where like the numbers on my doing comedy get fuzzy because like I did it in college, right? But it was so inconsistent mm-hmm. where it's like, where I was doing it throughout college, but like, so it was like freshman year of college was once a week because like there was a place to do it once a week. And then, and then that place, and then there was supposed to be a comedy club that was supposed to open at Purdue and the dude had no clue how to run a business. So it fucking tanked immediately. And then we lost the place we were doing the mic at, like they gave it to like a music night. So then I was only doing it sporadically at the comedy shrine when I'd come home and like, I didn't even think to go to the city. I was so delusional when I started comedy. It was fucking insane. I was like, yeah, Lauren Michaels is just going to see me. I'm just going to be the next Saturday Night Live cast member. And I was like, no, dude, you have to actually work at this. Mm-hmm. I was so unaware. I'm like, I'm just funny. I'm just good at this. But it's like, no, no, no. It takes an insane amount of... There's so many people like... And that's the problem with social media. Is there's so many people just constantly posting clips. And it's like, well, I just need a clip to blow up and then I'll be famous. It's like, no, you need to get fucking funny. You need to do this every day of your life. And then you'll get fucking good at it. And then a clip will blow up. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's like the people whose clips blow up. It's because they've been doing this so long that they're good at it. And you're posting literally open mic sets. And it's like, you haven't flushed out this joke. Why the fuck is it online? You seem like you're offended when people do that. It's, it's like, hey, work on the craft. Fucking piece it together. You're not going to be famous tomorrow. Fucking get good and then fucking go. There's no skipping the line in comedy. I agree. We did discuss this. I remember this. Yeah. And is there a line? Is, do you have a grace period? Because obviously you had a point where you thought this. Yeah, so there's, there's like, I'll give you a couple years. But Three I'll, years? Yeah. But also the thing is like things have shifted immensely in people's thought process and the way they do things. Because like because of COVID... All the old heads, like the OGs of like who were around, like they either moved or things happened. But like, so when I was coming up in the Chicago comedy scene when I started, which I still am, but fucking, I'm still not. I, I still you don't know, get. You have, a, you have a no, Brian. You have a special. That's amazing. I know I do, but I also don't get respect. To to some degree, I feel Why? like I don't get respect. I I don't know. I I feel like I get li- little brothered a lot by most of the comedy scene. Like, dude, trying to get shows for this special has been insane like it's been insane trying to get like which i get it's hard to book i book a show it's hard i get it but even people who i'm like close friends with that i've reached out to have left me on reddit i'm like oh that hurts a little bit that before we get into whatever you were about to say that baffles me because i watch you and i know i gave you a compliment um from enjoy that you seem to to like i can't remember exactly what i said i know i was referencing cat williams but you love cat williams yeah, you. I don't. I hated his new special. Didn't watch it. Oh, good. His old shit's perfect. Oh yeah. Oh, Cat Williams live match. Oh my god. But you, you work hard. Yeah. You are consistent. You are once you get. Past- I'm not good at the thing of asking people for things. Okay. Which is a necessity, which I'm learning to work on. But that's the, that's where the gap is, right? So like a lot of these new comics, just came in and they just like I wasn't raised to ask for things. Mm. You know, that, that, that's where it is. Like, I wasn't raised, I was raised you be polite and then you earn things. I wasn't raised to just be like, hey, can I have that? And that's where the gap is. A lot of like the new comics are just like, oh, hey, can I just go up? Like, dude, I remember uh, this girl walked into Laugh Factory and was like, hey, can I get a Saturday spot? Yeah, I'm totally like, are. you just did one open mic. What? I'm like, and it's like, I didn't have that like where you could just ask for things, mm-hmm. which it, it, it's insane to like do that. But like, 
just to to have the confidence to do that, I didn't have that. Closed mouths don't get fed. That's I've never heard that. Very good. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I got some. I got some gems. But so it sounds like. It's, but like the thing is, like when I came up in the Chicago scene, like when I was starting, I was like, all right, you go to open mics, and eventually people respect you, and they book you on your shows. Is what I thought the process was. Okay. So like I was just doing that, and like and that was kind of like how we were like told. That it basically felt like how we were told by like all the older people. You're like, yeah, you know, just show up to places. You know, be respectful, work on it, and then you'll get you'll get spots. But and then now they're gone. But now they're gone, and now it's like all these people slid in after COVID, and the like new comics are like, "Hey, can I just do that?" And they're like, "Yeah, sure." And I was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa I could have done that the whole time." <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? I yeah yeah I know what you mean. I definitely. And it, it frustrated a lot of like, I know a lot of like I've talked to a lot of people who have been around comedy in Chicago for a while, and when it first started, it frustrated the shit out of a lot of people who I'm not going to say their names, but they were really upset by it. And I was like, well, we could have done the same thing when COVID ended and we just didn't. And it's good for them for having the awareness, but also they need to work on the craft and they need to need to, it's great to run shows, but you should be going to fucking open mics at least four times a week. And it's not, it's not fucking, it was hilarious because my parents were like, why do you go to all these open mics if there's not going to be audiences there? I'm like, I don't need to tell jokes to an audience i need to hear my fucking thoughts out loud so i can piece together the material mm -hmm. and it's like yeah it's great you sit in a room and write something down cool go hear it out loud and learn the cadence learn how to fucking articulate it in a manner that's going to work when you do it i agree and i think in the long term those people who slid in are not going to they're not going to have the longevity because yeah. they hadn't put the work in anyway there, no there's plenty of people that like it's it's like yeah you, 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 when you try to get something too fast it fades away just as fast i agree you want to take this picture? Sure. All right.